Hello everyone, welcome back to ME1201 Computer Aided Design. This is a 3D modeling activity using Autodesk Inventor for Figure 7 Question 4D Coupling. Let's head over to the 2D autographic drawing and study the diagram. So, as usual, we will remove and try to simplify the whole design by removing all the holes such as this diameter 6, the diameter 20, and also this threaded hole here. Next, all the fillets have to go. Your ribs, these three ribs here. Okay, we will ignore it first until the end. The chamfer here, and small bosses here. Alright, so the next question to ask yourself is actually how can we create the base feature of this coupling? You can either have two ways, either be it a extrusion method or a revolution method, a revolve tool, using revolve tool. So for this example itself, you focus your attention to this area here. If you notice, there's a included taper here of diameter 32 and diameter 36. So let's recap first. If we are using extrude tool, we only have a 2D sketch and that 2D sketch will be extruded to a certain length. Therefore, we cannot achieve this uh, like a sloping uh, line here of diameter 32 and diameter 36 without any taper angle. Therefore, this question Straight away, you will know that we are using a revolve tool to create the shape. So, uh, the main base shape, okay, we will start with this axis of uh, rotation. Okay, this center line will act as your axis of rotation. And next, the profile itself, we will sketch as such. Number one, ignore the chamfer. Two, we will ignore this radius too. 3 all the way until this diameter 100, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and lastly 11. So these 11 lines will create the half profile of that uh, part itself. So let's go to our inventor. So this is our final product. Okay, we have the three ribs here. Your four, bo four bosses. And the taper at the bottom. The diameter 32 and diameter 36. Right, let's start. To begin with, click on File. Select New. And inside the Create New File dialog box, select Expand on the ENUS, select your matrix folder, and double click on standard mm.ipt. Our usual practice, expand your origin folder by clicking the plus sign, and show all the default planes. So select YZ plane, press the shift key and hold onto it, press your XY plane, remove your shift key, and right mouse click, select visibility. Next, I will select this XY plane to begin with. Create new sketch here. Now, I will just rotate my view so that it somewhat imitates what we have in our question. So this will be our uh, the center of rotation. So I will project this axis or this plane as our main axis. Right click, press OK to end it. Select the projected edge and convert it to center line. Once done, we can go into your lines and dimension, or not, not dimension, but draw out the 11 edges that we have just counted beforehand. So, one, ignore the chamfer. So, two, make sure they are 90 degrees. Ignore the uh, radius. So, we go up all the way to diameter 100. 
Now the small step of 8mm, we will go down slightly and then this will be have a, having a thickness of 3mm, you can just enter there, 3. Now we will go down slightly. The next one, if we take a look in your drawing, there is a small step here. So common mistake that we all do is actually we treat this line and this line as collinear to one another. However, if you see here, the first step that we have just drawn is actually 3mm, okay, shown as this dimension at the bottom, and the inner depth here is actually 5mm. So take note of these differences when you are sketching out your uh, inside your inventor. So make sure that you don't have this tracing line as shown here. You, if you do, you do have this, just move it away from it. Okay, so let's keep it to that. Here, and then we will draw the taper. And lastly, we will end it to the center line that we have just uh, created. Next, let's dimension them. Uh, let's begin with all the diameters. So, like as mentioned just now, we have a diameter 100 which is the, the biggest uh, circle here. Next, we have your 66 and 56, this small step, and of course the taper, 36 and 32. And lastly, at the front here, okay, you cannot see it on your uh, front view, you can only see from your end view here, which is diameter 32. So, let's dimension. So click on dimension, select the edge, and select the center line. Take note, always to get the diameter symbol out, you must select from edge to center line. Edge to center line. So enter here, 32, press the tick key here to center line, the edge. This time I'm selecting the entity, the points. Same thing, this is 32, so I will just click on this uh, existing dimension to reuse it instead of typing it. Now this point to the center line, this time it's 36, press the tick icon. This inner one is 56, press the tick icon, this one, let's repeat again, press dimension here to here. This is 66 and lastly 100. Okay. All right. Now, let's add uh, more dimensions. Uh, we have not added this 5. Let's add this 5 and 12 first. And then second, we will add the 40. So dimension. 5 here and from this edge to the endmost of this part is actually 12 and we have from here to the starting point at 40 mm now we will add this 8 mm as the thickness of the diameter 100 so this is your diameter 100, I will add another dimension here and give it a value of 8mm. So if you notice, we have all fully sketched, uh, fully constrained. You can finish your sketch, click on the revolve tool, and once everything shows a preview and you're happy with it, press the OK button. All right, it's coming up nice. Now, we will now perform this diameter 12, okay, the boss of diameter 12. It has a thickness or step height of 3mm and the quantity here is 4. So, when you see very similar shapes and it revolve about or you get pattern about a center axis here, we will use the circular pattern in this example. So, uh, referring to this also, we can just do this diameter 12 boss first, create one of the diameter 6 hole, and then add the fillet of 
R33. By doing so, by doing these three features, we can actually apply the circular pattern one shot to create all these four with the same shape. So instead of you doing uh, one boss and then pattern it, and then the hole, then you pattern it again, and then the fillet of all fours, so it will reduce and improve your workflow. So let's start from this uh, phase, create a new sketch. Okay. Uh, it has a PCD of 80. Okay, a PCD of 80. So let's create a circle and dimension it as diameter 80. And then we will just start with one of the sketching gear, one circle of diameter 12. So go to circles, start here as your center point. Okay, just click somewhere, dimension it as 80. Now I will project this vertical plane here okay, to act as an intersection point between here and the diameter 80 circle. I will draw one more circle using the intersection point and this time I will give a dimension of 12. Okay, finish your sketch. Click on Extrude Tool. Instead of selecting the many regions that you have here, okay, four regions means you need to select four times. Just click on the sketch. Okay, means select on the circle. And doing so, you automatically select all the regions within it. Okay, so now I have a thickness of 3mm and press OK. I will create the hole of diameter 6 and this hole goes through all the way so select hole tool click on this face as your starting plane now click on the circular reference point to centralize the hole make sure it's a simple hole there's no sitting termination is through all with a diameter of 6 and you can press ok Next, apply your fillet, change the value to 3mm and press here and press OK to end it. So if you see here, we have the boss with the diameter 6 hole and the fillet applied. And lastly, just click on the circular pattern, select the features 1, 2 and 3. Remember, you must select the rotation axis. If you do not select this, we will not be able to change the number of instances of the, uh, the, the bosses there and we cannot play with the angle also. So just select this cursor to select to, 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 to select a, a circular uh, center. Number of uh, items here will be 4 and of course the amount of rotation is throughout 360 degrees and press OK. All right. Okay. Now, for this case, uh, we can do the rib first because it's quite simple. Okay. We just need to draw a line, a diagonal line, with a sixty degrees from this vertical line uh, line to the sloping line of the rib, and with a length of twenty eight. Okay. So from the center to the uh, intersection point here. So. I will begin it from here, from this uh, work plane, okay, because I, I, I need to show you some feature of your circular pattern also. So let me just start with this work plane. Click on line, here to here, dimension them from this center to this point. If you cannot select the point, just hover over it, directly over it, right mouse click, select others and then click on the drop down menu and click on points change it to 28 and change the angle here at 60 degrees next we will just finish our sketch click on ribs 
select your profile change to this option parallel to sketch plane and swap over the direction of the rib to get your preview here this rib has a thickness of 6 mm and press ok next we will do a circular pattern for this fella this circular pattern because we only have three ribs so let's select the feature first rotation axis please remember to do so click here we have three axis uh, three items three ribs at angle of 180 but if you see here i can swap it over but then that's not what we want we want another rib on the other side so we have to click on this mid plane and by doing so it will just uh, yeah, make sure that you have equal number of uh, items on each side of the uh, plane itself so this mid plane option can be useful sometimes okay so take note the difference here you can play with rotation axis at the same time there's one more option for you to apply which is mid plane to ensure that they get applied this way once you are done press ok yep you are getting somewhere next let's conquer this portion here uh, if you see sometimes in our question we always have a small view here okay this small view is a, like a representation just yeah, a small preview from a certain point or a certain uh, angle of it okay certain side of the part itself uh, for this example here Okay, we are looking from the bottom upwards into the coupling part so in fact if you look from bottom up this is the shape we have a semicircle with a line that goes all the way to this uh, diameter 100 uh, surface here all right uh, it has a length of 25 okay so what i will do is actually i will begin from this uh, center plane here Okay, the origin plane I will draw all this shape means a circle and a rectangle give a dimension of 16 from the base here to the center of the circle how do we know is yes, we can just trace and you notice that they are at the center so this 16 and I will extrude it to a value of 25 mm okay so I've mentioned I will begin from this plane the center plane create sketch our project geometry okay this center portion i will apply a slice graphics by pressing the f7 key or you can right click slice graphics draw a circle and a rectangle apply your dimensioning okay uh, the width of this boss here okay has a value of 16 okay it has a height from the base here to the center of the circle at 16 to All right if you see uh, yeah it's not centralized together so no problem i will apply this point a coincident constraint from this point to the midpoint of this line so coincident constraint from the center of the circle to the midpoint and lastly i need my this line to be collinear to this starting phase of the diameter 100 so line to line constraint will be collinear this icon select here and select here once done you can finish your sketch click on the extrude tool select the profile okay uh, for my case I'm just trying to like wiggle my way out it means I will just try to move my mouse until something shows or gets a preview uh, if you are not comfortable with this method okay you can click on view change your view style to 
wireframe. By doing so, you can see your sketch. Go back your, to your 3D model tab, click your extrude tool, select the sketch, and extrude by 25. It just wrote, it, wireframe might be harder to see, but yeah, if you, you are careful enough, you can actually differentiate your which side is up, which side is down, left and right. Okay, so I have a rib here. Okay, let me just place it nicely so that it's easier for you guys to see. This is the rib, so my direction is downward, so this is correct. Okay, 25. Now let's go back to view and click on the visual style and select back your shaded with edges. And always double check your view. So uh, this small boss at the side here has a threaded hole or a tap hole in Inventor of M6. The threaded length is actually 6mm and the full blind hole depth is actually 10mm. So let's do this first. Under 3D model, click on holes, select the starting plane, select the curvature as your reference. Now, under the hole type, change to tap hole. The thread type, change it to ISO matrix profile with a value of 6. Okay, great. We, I don't need to change for now. Since the drawing states here, there's two values here. Okay, the depth of the threaded part is actually lesser than the full depth of the hole. Okay, in Inventor itself, this is what that apply whether you have a full threading or not so for our case now because they have different values we will use we will deactivate this full depth do not put a tick icon here termination it will be a distance the drill point is a pointed end now the full length is 10 mm and then the threaded length is 6 mm all right, let's preview it, rotate your view just to have a small preview and press OK. Okay, you can see the pointed end by this uh, different gradient to it. And we have a threaded length with a different full depth of the blind hole. Okay, so we have checked it. This is somewhat correct. Now let's perform this diameter 20 hole. It's a true hole, very simple. Let's head back to our inventor, click on hole tool, select this space as your starting surface, select this diameter 32 as your circular reference. This time change back to a simple hole type with a true all termination and a diameter of 20. Press OK. Alright, we are almost there. Uh, what's needed actually is the chamfer here, 2 by 45 degrees, fillets here, here, there's a fillet here, also a fillet here, here and here. So uh, my suggestion when doing fillets, we always do it uh, sort of group by group of uh, a certain family. Uh, let me show you what I mean. So let's say I would like to fill at this edge. Okay. Let me let me remove the work plane so it's easier to see. So let me repeat. Let's say I want to fill at just this edge. In fact, for my case, I will love to group them together. Means I will only select these edges to be filled together. Okay. So if you can see uh i will have a few subgroups of fillets with the same r3 value uh the good thing about it if let's say one edge fail okay you can easily identify from your model browser where you went wrong so it defeats the purpose it, it, it's much better when you rather than you just uh fillet everything one shot because in fact, if you fill it everything one shot, if there's an error or that fillet is impossible to be created in Inventor, you will not know which is which. 
uh, which one is suitable, which one is working and which one is not. So by doing this method, by grouping them to like certain similarity, it will uh, ease up your uh, tracking back on how to solve your error messages. Okay, so click on fillet. Okay, radius is three. I've mentioned I like to click here and here all the vertical height first. And for my case, I will also click on this since there's already a fillet on this top here. Okay, let me just uh, rearrange it back nicely so that you can notice the difference. Okay, this portion here is curved. Therefore, my inventor, so this edge must be curved and it will just daisy chain it all the way through. Press apply so that we can continue applying more fillets here. Click on this edge here, now at the bottom. One, two, three, four. And let's study again. We also have one more fillet here. Okay. Apply. I will apply here. So this portion is also filleted. Okay, at the end of the rib itself, that's why you can see a little bit of a dimensional extension line here. Okay, so that means there's a fillet over there. So this edge, one, two, and three. Press OK. Lastly, I would say we are left with this fillet here. One and two. Click on fillet again. Make sure the radius value is correct, R3. Select this edge and select this curvature and press OK. What's left is actually your chamfer, 2 by 45, which is here, 2 by 45. So click on chamfer, select this edge, 2 by 45, press OK. Double check your model. Ensure you have created all your features. Ensure all the fillets are there. Okay. If everything is fine, save your work and happy trying.